capacity is 65,000 at Ford Field, and we are right around that number today. A good crowd on hand and seemingly ready to go in the Motor City. A few short moments ago, these two teams made their way out of the Ford Field tunnels, and the noise level in this place just about off the charts. They are set for football as the Lions get ready to do battle with the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati set to take over once again. This is Joe Mixon, and he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you can do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Boyd's the target, and he has it over the middle. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. They're passing here. Joe Burrow got an open man. That's C.J. Uzama. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. If they didn't have that penalty a moment ago, it'd be a first down. Still a nice 13-yard pickup. A lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. third down he's got his man boy and he's going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion burrow to boyd there for the cincy first first down but one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play never lock in on any one guy make sure you keep your eyes moving scan the field and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup they will throw on first down with Burrow. Almost able to intercept it. That's one he would have liked to have held on to on this first drive. Instead, second down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. Second and 10 now, Burrow. This one grabbed by A.J. Green. Well, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, step it back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Desmond Trufant there making the tackle. He ran it five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And a pretty good run as he'll get this down close to a first at the Lions' 15-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. 
That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with it. At the Lions' six-yard line. First down marker at the five. It's second and goal. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. And this is going to be incomplete. Giovanni Bernard, the intended receiver out of the backfield. And it's third and short. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. So play number 10 now coming. It's been a long opening drive, but this is third down. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. Dancing to his left. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. No score after one on EA Sports. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. They'll run here with Bernard, and he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. touchdown. Taking it in from a yard out, and the Bengals take it right down and score on the opening drive. Well, that drive felt like it took up an eternity. We finally have some action on the scoreboard. Yeah, but plenty of action prior, too, because that drive took up all the first quarter before we spilled into the second, and finally, the points were registered. On the other sideline, they're chomping at the bit just to get the football. Bullet good on the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. Now Bullock will send this one away after the touchdown. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Detroit's offense ready to take over. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. Swift to start the drive. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Seven yards there and a first down. That was a round run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. On first and 10, Stafford. Oh, he lost the football. Stafford puts it on the ground. But I believe the Lion was there to recover it. Yes, they will indeed keep possession. Able to fall on it, but look where they recovered it. That's a big loss. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage, but I think the good news outweighs it. Able to retain possession. That was big for them. The fumble on first down now. Here's second down. Stafford going to give it to Swift. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. 
It's now third well, we down. talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. It's a gain of six, but not enough, as he'll be forced to punt on their first drive of the game. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. Alex Erickson deep for Cincinnati. It'll be a 41-yard punt, given five on the return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. They have to be thrilled with that first drive. They got them the touchdown. Now they'll be looking to make it a two-score advantage here on the road. And you know they spent all week in practice, in meetings, talking about taking an early advantage. Being the road team, going up a score, that takes the crowd out of the game and puts some doubt in the minds of their opponents. And Justin Coleman brings him down. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Six yards left on second down. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. Green's got it over the middle. And yeah, he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A gain there of 21 yards. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. On second down, Burrow. He's got the first down here inside the 30. And he's going to have a first down, and they get into field goal range here at the 29. First down, here's Burrow. Oh, nearly a disaster there on the check down. But they'll get it back. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Throwing again, it's Burrow. There's a short one caught by Uzama. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. The second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. And Burrow going to throw again. Detroit was up for the challenge through the air. They force a fourth down. And that one off the mark, a little late with a throw. Desmond Trufant on the coverage. So on fourth down, Burrow will give way to Randy Bullock for the Bengals field goal. It's a 39-yard attempt right hash. And Bullock will put this one through. And the lead moves to 10-0. 
score. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. And things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to the goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. Touchback. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. And you're under a minute to go in the half, a first half that hasn't been particularly kind to you. How do you think they'll play this? Well, I think the smart approach is to run out the clock, lick your wounds at the half, and see if you can come up with a strategy to play better in the second. But there's also something to challenging your offense right here. You know, hey, guys, you help dig this hole. See if you can get us out of it a little bit before the half runs out. Let's go make some plays. Kenny Galladay, the intended receiver. And it's second down. And this one incomplete. Threw it down at the feet of his receiver. It's now second and 10 at the 25-yard line. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. To throw again. Stafford. Open now, he's got him to tight end Hawkinson. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. First and 10 here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. That'll be taken in there by Kenny Galladay. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The Lions now going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. Stafford with a play fake to Swift, and he'll set to throw. And he finds Danny Amendola. And he's going to have the first down as they move into field goal range here at the 25-yard line. That one goes for 24 yards. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. At the 25-yard line. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. This from 42 yards out. And the 13-year man puts it through. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to three. So yes, they'll still be down going into intermission, but the deficit is now made even smaller, very manageable. Yeah, and if nothing haywire happens here in this last couple of precious seconds, they will go into the locker room with a nice bounce in their step, having gotten a little bit closer on the scoreboard. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. 
But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, Jamal Agnew now to return it. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. The Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and ten. Third quarter starts with a run from Swift. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets them to second and four. Well, I think after that run, the defense get back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? On second down and four, Stafford over the middle. It's Amendola. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook. But oh, so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Stafford on first down. Another attempt, another incompletion, and when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long gain or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points, and the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. A gain of 13, it's a first down. They completed the screen, but one of the things you worry about is can the quarterback get rid of the ball before he's actually tackled. So your offensive linemen have to hold up the rushers a little bit because you want to make sure you keep your guy's jersey clean throughout the game. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Now a carry for Swift. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Out of the gun, Stafford. It's caught. He's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 21. A good pick up there of 20 yards. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They look like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. On first and 10, it's Swift. They'll get it inside the red zone, but only for a couple down to the 19. Ball carrier. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. From the gun, here's Stafford. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion force there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. Horrible. But the team that was on defense, I think we gotta give a little bit of credit. Able to hang in there, 
and force a key turnover. They're in the red zone, though, had a chance to tie it and an opportunity here, missed. Here the catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake at the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride. And he was able to run free after the catch. They'll run on first down. Bernard. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Danny Shelton. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Burrow looking to pass. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. 22 yards on the catch and run. A first down. A gain of 22 yards. First down, Cincinnati. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Now Burrow on first down. This one hauled in by Sample. And down inside the 15 he goes. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Another nice pick up through the air. And I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon. But with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. On first down. Bernard. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. The Bengals on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. And he's got it. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Giovanni Bernard. He scored on the ground and through the air. And the Bengals are able to grow their lead. Well, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but his top two options were not available on that throw, so he went the safe route and worked out pretty well. It was like you were in the pocket. How about you going through the progressions like that? What a lot of offenses say, touchdown to check down. Look downfield first, bring it back to the line of scrimmage. Not easy for a rookie to do. Oftentimes they get one look and they make their decision off of that. He went through three. That was impressive. Now Bullock will send this one away after the touchdown. To return, here's Agnew. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, because you're exactly you right. That, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs>
Three yards the game there, second down. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. To throw again on second down. Stafford, that's complete to Swift out of the backfield. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play, backwards a yard. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it will help them at contract time. And he is going to have a Lions first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. First down Detroit, 16 yards on the pickup. It's going to be second down. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Throwing again, Stafford. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Carl Lawson in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. Remember, throughout my career here, defensive coaches always say, guys, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. After the sack, Stafford and the Lions come up on a third and long situation. The shotgun snap for Stafford. And he can't quite pick it. No interception so far. That probably should have been their first. But at least it's fourth down. And I think we'll probably see him go for it here on fourth down. No reason not to. Down a couple of scores. They have to try and make something good happen. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. He's going to let it fly. And got his man complete. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. One crisis averted, but they still need to move hastily. On first down at Stafford. Completing it here to Marvin Jones. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. This is caught, and they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. Chewing up big yardage, another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. The Lions now going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. To the air again, Stafford. So they hit Peter, but don't count it yet. There's laundry on the field. We'll see what the penalty flag is about. 
So reverse the celebration. We'll see if they have something else in their bag of tricks. And isn't that always tough to watch when they score and you see the excitement and then when they realize those points aren't going to count, can they get it back together and find their way back to the end zone? They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. Throwing again at Stafford. The quick slot caught. And he's into the end zone. No flags. It's a touchdown. And now a two-point conversion. And we'll be tied here in the final minute. Do they have one big call left? Here we go. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah, yeah you know. It doesn't you gotta, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> seconds to go. A must recover if they're going to have any chance. And this is going to be recovered by the Bengals' hands team. And they're going to hang on and win this game. Uh, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. down to a knee and that should be the final act of this one yeah it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd but when you go on the road that band of brothers attitude right just us against the world and get it done <laughs> how happy are they i remember a coach at a previous stop telling me you get a win on the road doesn't matter the opponent get out of there like you stole something and they, <laughs> they did in this one so this one in the win column now for the Cincinnati Bengals. And I tell you, this was a fun one. Just a close game. Nothing comes easy in this league, as you know. They had to work for that victory. I've got to go back to what you just said. Nothing comes easy in this league. How many times have we talked to coaches prior to a game and assessed, you know, the strengths, the weaknesses, the whole deal? Even in games when one coach was a decided favorite, what do they always say to us? But you do know this is really a seven-point league. Seven points either way usually decides a ball game. We had exactly that in this one. And not only that, but this is a gutsy road victory, one they can hang their hat on. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say so long, everyone, from Ford Field.